Hey, uh, what's up everybody? So, this is Russ, rwgresearch.com, and today I'm actually going to show you something very unique and cool with a PlayStation 3 and Arduino. But before I get started, I did not get the opportunity to make a Happy Thanksgiving video. So Happy Thanksgiving to you guys, and I hope everything is going well. It's uh, Thanksgiving Day in America, and we celebrate it, and be thankful for everything you have. I am thankful for everything I have, and uh, want to send a blessing to everyone out there that, uh, uh, you know, just is in a hard time right now. But here's what is really crazy. I'm going to try to get through this quickly, but hang out because it's kind of a situated long process, but you guys are going to be, I think, impressed. I've hacked my way into fixing uh, a problem that I had with a PS3 and not being able to operate it because I don't have a controller. So I'm going to start out like this. First of all, two years ago, a guy told me he had a PlayStation, so he, uh, I never got it from him. I just got it from him about three days ago, and I turned it on. It was in shandles when I got it. It was in a bag with screws everywhere and pieces and parts, and the entire tray was apart. I had to figure out how to put all that stuff back together. So I put it back together. I sent him a message. I said, hey, what's wrong with this thing? He says, I don't even remember. So I turned it on, got it functioning to where it would come on, and what would happen is it would flash, it would go into like a yellow light, and it would turn off, and it would beep three times. Well, I looked that up. Basically, that is a um, uh, yellow light of death, as they call it. So I'm like, great. So I looked up how to fix that. Well, what happens is the GPU and the CPU separate from the motherboard inside the PlayStation. So I'm like, okay, what do I do about that? Well, I seen these guys on YouTube that actually took heat guns and repaired these things, literally resoldered those connections back together. So I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I got my heat gun out and my thermal um, um, thingamabobber to check what the temperature was. Did a lot of research and found out the rough estimated temperature to get those things up to to actually re-solder the chip back onto there. You heat the chip with a heat gun and you can get those to solder back on, which is insane. So I took it all apart, I heated it up, got it to where I think it was the way I liked it, and I got it so hot that it actually bowed the motherboard. And somehow, some way, this thing actually is working right now. It is on, functioning, and working. So for those people out there who say, oh, you can't do that with a heat gun, yeah, you can. I did it. I was very impressed and super excited. So off to the next thing. I get it up. It's working. I'm like, fantastic. This is so cool. So I grab my wireless um, USB. I, I'm sorry. It's a, uh, uh, what is it? Bluetooth. Sorry. A Bluetooth cheapo keyboard that I bought for like 10 bucks that I use for my iPhone so I can type emails because that's most of the time the only time I get. So I hooked it up, got it working, the whole thing's working. I'm like, this is fantastic. I'm like, alright, well, I want to reset this so that I can um, use this thing as my own instead of the other owners. So here's what I did. I reset it, and guess what? I turned it on, and you know what happened? This screen. Yep. So I've got my generic keyboard connected to this thing. And no matter what I do, well, no matter what I do, I can't do it. It says you have to plug in your controller, and you have to connect it up. Well, today is Thanksgiving. I did this in uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning. All day today, none of the stores were open. What am I supposed to do? So, I didn't do anything. I thought, well, I'll just wait. I'll go buy one from some generic store, and uh, a used one. Bring it here, set it up, and then bring it back. Because I don't plan on using this as a PlayStation. I actually plan on using it as just a, a browser and also for uh, Blu-ray. That's really the only thing I was going to use it for because the other one's crapping out. It came with the TV for free. It's a piece of junk. I hate it. So I was going to use the PS3. Well, now I can't use it. All day today. All day. This screen. What the heck? I was so mad, so I'm like, well, one of my buddies, Justin, came over and we started looking. He couldn't find anything. I finally ran across this thing where you could take an Arduino and turn it into a joystick. And I'm like, 
Well, I've got some Arduinos laying around. So let's see what I can do. Well, the first thing I did, it, you're supposed to use an Uno, and the only one I have is this one. And it has a different chip. So I'm like, well, crap. So I got on my computer, did some digging, and then I remembered that I had this one that I purchased, which is a Mega 256. Now, it calls for an Arduino, uh, Uno, but the Mega 256 has the same USB chip. So this USB converter. Okay, well I have to put this thing into a special mode. So first of all, I downloaded the program and I opened up this program. And on here you could actually interface after you downloaded the program here. And actually, I'll show you what it is. It's called Uno Joy Uno Joy. That's what it's called. All right, for those of you wondering. Uno Joy, go check it out. And it does work on the Mega. All right, so I grabbed the program, uh, it's uh, oh, where it is right here. Grabbed it, downloaded it, and then you can open up the GUI that shows that it was actually working, which is here, and you could actually see the buttons functioning. All you have to do is short out the certain pins to ground, and it will act as a controller. So I did that, and I tried to do that with this, and it worked, but I could not put this into uh, the special mode. The uh, I don't even know what it's called, DUF mode, yeah, uh, the DFU mode, so that I could actually, what you do is you rewrite the chip for the USB to turn it into a writable. So instead of reading from it now, it writes to it. So basically it dumps a, you actually, <laughs> you actually program this board, this special chip, you actually program it you flash it. it. You actually flash it. So it's kind of sketchy. But I'm like, eh, whatever. So you can flash it back. And so I'm like, alright, cool. So I flashed it with the proper stuff that, that comes off this website. And uh, after getting all this readme and all this crap and looking through all this different stuff and trying to make this work, now I can take this and trust me, I looked for hours for a shortcut around this. There is not one. But if I take this and sorry about the footage. You can see we had a fun Thanksgiving today. The the kitchen over there is is still a, a giant mess. The uh, the living room is still a giant mess and I've got a lot to do. But check this out. So, this is just a standard USB cable. All right, I'm going to plug it in here stretch it out. I'm going to try to hold this all at once. Alright, so for some reason, as soon as I plug this in, it does its thing. Wow, that's some bad footage. Alright, you ready? Watch this. Ta-da! Now, the joystick thinks it's all whack. So now, that I've got this set up, I'm just going to unplug it. Okay, and plug in my USB keyboard. Alright, we just totally unplugged the Arduino all together. And now, I've got to try to do this with one hand. Um, yeah, right. This is hilarious footage, I bet. There we go. And now I can use my keyboard. So, I'm in English. Enter. Boom. Sure, recalibrate. Boom. So now I'm using my standard keyboard, and once I get it booted, I can actually go back and use my wireless Bluetooth keyboard, and I'm back in the game. Bada boom, bada bing. Now that is resources right there. So I have learned that I can hack my way into my PS3 using an Arduino, never purchasing anything extra. This is all resources. Amazing. Um, the other thing that you need to know is that pin 5 here, the analog 5 input, if you short that to ground, that is the PlayStation button. Now for whatever reason when I plugged it in it just went right away. I'm cool with that. You may not even need to hit it. You may just need to make it work. And by the way, yes, the PS3 has the latest software which is 4.1 or 4.2 I think. Um, I have no idea don't own a PlayStation 3. This is the first one I've ever had. Now I can use it as a Blu-ray player because I fixed it with a heat gun. 
So cheers to everyone out there. Uh, if you think you can't figure it out, hack your way into it. This is probably one of the most extensive hacks that I've done. And it may not be very extensive for some people, but you know, for other people out there that knows the other options and things that I've built, such as the pulse fire box and uh, the GUI that goes with it, I didn't make. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a pretty cool that's a pretty cool deal. So, bada boom, bada bing. I'm gonna set this thing up and I'm gonna relax because it's actually uh, about 20 minutes past Thanksgiving Day. All right, this has been. Uh, fun. I hope you guys learned something today. And uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving to you guys. Uh, leave a comment. Oh, I got one request. If you do watch this to the very end, if you would like to try something, try to give your thanks in one word. So if you had one word and you wanted to say thanks, what would it be? How would you describe it? As in, what are you thankful for in one word? So in one word, tell me what you're thankful for down in the comments. Peace and love to you guys. Check out rwgresearch.com and open-source-energy.org. And uh, now you know how to bypass the, uh, the PlayStation 3 intro setup screen without a PlayStation controller. All right, peace out. Have a good day.